Hello and welcome to this video about the Infinite Run Engine 1.4 update. I'm Renault and today I'm going to show you what's new in this new release. Um, so uh, first of all I'm going to stop uh, this game and I'm going to switch to uh, Vertical which is the new demo scene. So uh, Vertical is the first uh, well Vertical game example in the Infinite Run Engine. Uh, so you already have uh, like Backwards Dragon, Flappy Cloud, Flight of the Albatross, Jelly Forest, Lane Runner, a few minimal uh, demo scenes, Sky Theory, and then uh, this new vertical game. So as mentioned in the scene here, uh, this, level, this level is built to be played at uh, this ratio here. So uh, you can change the game view here if you click on this uh, little drop down here. I've created a custom one, uh, iPhone 7, because you know why not. Um, so what's new in, in this level? Uh, well, first of all, it's uh, it's mobile. Uh, it's built for mobile, and you play this little um, yellow character. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe a flame or something. And uh, all you have to do is jump and jump, so you don't fall into the the pit. Uh, at the bottom. The game can be controlled using uh, a gamepad, using a keyboard, but also on mobile you can use uh, swipes, which is also something new in version 1.4. Uh, it supports all kinds of devices, and uh, right now I'm playing on a keyboard obviously, but uh, I could also play uh, using swipes if I wanted to. So, um, the, the new things are the fact that you can now have uh, one-way platforms, as you can see, I can I can jump from below on these platforms, and then uh, you know I stay at the top. Um, and the other new thing is that every now and then uh, the spawner that spawns the platforms uh, will change its content and change what is uh, spawning and what is not. Uh, so you have these uh, pink, red, reddish platforms, but sometimes you'll also get some blue ones, sometimes you'll get some green ones, and we'll see how it works. And if you fall, you die, and then you respawn, and you can, you know, play again, and you, you've lost a life. So uh, it's basically the, the same principle as all the others, but uh, right now it's, it's vertical, and that's something that's been uh, requested by a lot of you. Uh, so let's see, let's see how it works. Uh, right here, I have my my platform spawner, and as you can see, uh, it's um, it's fed by a multiple object puller here, where I have my platform red, platform green, and platform blue. Uh, it's a regular distance spawner. Uh, what makes it uh, new is that somewhere here I have an empty game object. Uh, but I also have somewhere a scenario manager here. And uh, this scenario manager is specific to this scene. And uh, if we open it, we'll see that what it does, it's not that one, it's not that one, that's the one. Um, so what it does is that at uh, 20 seconds, it will enable uh, the, the blue platforms and then the green ones and then the red ones. And all this is done using a new method called enable objects, where you specify the name of the objects you want to uh, turn on or off. In this case, we want to turn the platform red off, the platform green for, to false too, and uh, the platform blue to true. Uh, what this will do is, in your platform spawner, uh, it will turn these little uh, checkboxes on or off, and uh, your spawner will only be able to spawn um, the platforms that are enabled. So uh, a good way to see how this new stuff works is to go to the minimal sandbox scene here. So uh, here we have a bunch of um, spawners, really uh, random spawners, stuff like that, that are already set up. Uh, there are a lot of examples that you can play with. Uh, for example here I can activate the timed spawner and press play and see how it works. So as you can see it's uh, a spawner that will spawn these green things, whatever they are, at a regular time interval. Another one I can play with is uh, maybe the rubber spawner. And this one, uh, it spawns like these 
rubber cubes that will just bounce on and on. Um, so really there are quite a lot of them, or you have the nested platform spawner that will uh, spawn uh, like these level chunks uh, and they will be aligned and stuff like that. Um, then we have uh, what I wanted to show you today is this multiple object puller comparison. So uh, if I press play, you'll see that we have like, uh, I think, eight uh, spawners. They are all distance spawners and they are all um, based on multiple object pools. They actually all have the same multiple object pool. So uh, I think they are spawning uh, elements of the background from the backwards dragon. Uh, demo level so we have clouds rocks trees and they all have two clouds four rocks six trees and um, if we press pause at the right time like here you see that uh, this one for example will spawn in the original order sequential which means that it will first spawn two clouds four rocks then six trees two clouds four rocks six trees then this one is a random between objects uh, so uh, every time it will roll the dice and decide whether it should pick a cloud, a rock, or a tree. Um, so this gives this result, and this one uh, spawns them in the original order, which means one cloud, one rock, one tree, one cloud, one rock, one tree, as long as there's something in the pool. Um, because uh, these are set as... Uh, you know, uh, the pool cannot expand uh, here. Because uh, these ones, on the other hand, they can expand. So uh, they will apply the same rules, but if uh, their pool has em are empty, they will generate new rocks, trees, and so on, uh, so that it, there's always something on screen. What's new here is that I've added this small um, checkbox on each object, which allow you to enable or disable them. And I have added also this test script, uh, which is called multiple object pool tester, um, really just for demo purposes. And uh, as you can see from here, I can, for example, disable the clouds. So the clouds are the white ones that you see here. If I click on the button from now on, there won't be any cloud spawning from any of all these um, spawners uh, because that's what this script does. Uh, I can also uh, enable them again and soon we should start seeing them appearing again in all the spawners. So um, that's some nice uh, stuff that you can have to, uh, uh, in conjunction with a scenario manager, you can uh, you know, have your spawner that maybe spawns your regular platforms of your level or your chunks of level. Uh, and at some point, you know, want the level to evolve into something else. Uh, well, that's the way to do it. So uh, th that's pretty much uh, everything that's new. It, uh, it's actually a big change uh, into the Infinite Runner engine because it will allow you to create new kinds of level and, and really the possibilities are endless. Um, in other news, uh, in this 1.4 release, there was also, uh, as you've seen, the support for swipes, uh, the possibility to grab multiple spin multipliers items in a, in a row, and uh, a bunch of fixes such as uh, dependencies to sun managers that's been uh, removed, uh, the post-processing effects have been upgraded, um, there were a few uh, display glitches in the Jelly 4S demo scene that have been uh, fixed. Asset uh, serialization has been moved to forced text uh, because it's just much simpler that way. Um, and uh, everything that was in a resources folder was, is now in a, a prefab folder, so it doesn't change much for you. Uh, it's just much lighter when you, when you want to um, uh, compile for iOS or Android, stuff like that. Um, I'll keep updating the asset, of course, as I've done since its release. Um, really, the updates are user-driven. Uh, it's based on the requests I guess uh, I get and uh, you know the, the things you want to add in your own games so um, I think uh, next uh, I'm gonna add some maybe ad support or stuff like that uh, because that seems to be the most requested feature right now. I hope you like this new release. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.